Thank you, everyone, for joining another uh, discussion at the Ketonian Corner. Um, I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, John. Howdy, howdy. And today we are going to, um, we actually have a few things to talk about. Um, our subject for today is um, q and an, or question and answers, uh, typical for the beginning of the month for us. But we've got a couple other things. I'm going to try to switch some things up this week on you. So, um How's your week been, John? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. So I'm uh, uh, fantastic workout this morning. Still working out fasted. Still haven't changed anything around that. So uh, I've been toying around with meditation. That's what I've been toying with lately, and uh, I really suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> Just be honest. <laughs> nice. I actually have looked into that. Um, but that's not what you're doing. You're doing fasting, remember? So if you tuned in last week, you made a call. And and I will, I, I, I do have one thing we'll talk about later because I embedded it in the Q&A. But, but for you, for fasting, how, how'd that go? Um, It was not a good experience for me, I'll be honest. Hey, at least you're honest. So after talking to Tom last week, um, I had been toying with the idea of doing it anyway. And so after talking with Tom I decided that I was going to break through that mental um, barrier that I had and uh, just do it. So my husband and I both uh, joined Tom on it, with his group uh, to start a fast on Sunday. I made it 25 and a half hours. I was at work and probably too much information, but I actually got sick and had to go in the bathroom and throw up. So... Um, wasn't really sure what it was, what caused it. I had been eating salt because, John, you had told us that, or told me, doing that uh, helped you with the hunger. So I had been eating salt that day, plus I drank coffee. So it wasn't like I took a spoonful. No, right, yeah, I mean, and I, I didn't. a little on your tongue. Yeah, and but. that's what I had been doing as well. So I would, like, dip my finger in the salt and then just set it on my tongue and let it dissolve. Um, but I had done that multiple times throughout the morning. Um, and then also had been drinking coffee. So although I drink coffee every morning on an empty stomach, um, I generally have some sort of fat with it, and I had been and this was black coffee. So I don't know if it was a combination of that. I don't know if I had a bug. I'm not really sure what the cause was. Um, but I I reached out to Tom, asked him, you know, if he thought it was it was weird, and I'd also reached out to you, John had you know. I said it was before. weird. <laughs> Yeah. And it actually scared me a little bit. Um, so Tom, you know, said that that was not normal, obviously, and if I didn't feel better, that I should break the fast. So I was going to try to tough it out till I got home, um, but the closer it got to um, that 25-and-a-half-hour mark, the weirder I was feeling. Um, and, again, I was shaky, but I'm not sure what the cause of that was. I don't know if it was because I threw up or – uh, but I wasn't willing to take any chances, so Better not I went. To take chances. So. Yeah, I hey, went you? down and got some food in the cafeteria. And... All right, so that's you. Yeah. You said your husband was trying it too, though. He did. Um, so he actually made it 58 hours, um, and and he honestly broke it because um, we, we didn't prepare any food for the week because we hadn't planned on eating. So. Um, yesterday he asked me if I wanted him to cook some burgers out on the grill and oh, of course I was all, yeah, I was all for it. <laughs> um, so as he was cooking, then that's when he made the decision that he was going to okay. stop and it's like eat. a good time for <laughs> right. So. Well, hey, that's part of it, right? You, you learn and you move on. So, uh, I, is it going to stop you from training again? It is not, and actually he sent me um, a message this morning and said that he is thinking that he's wanting to do this on a monthly basis. Tom? Uh, no, my husband. Oh, your husband? Oh. Yeah, he's he's wanting to do this monthly. I don't know what duration. Wow. He said we talk about it um, tonight when I get home, but um, I would like to try it again myself, um, again, just because... I would do it again. I'm, I do not like to have to given um when i have a challenge in front of me i'm i don't really like to admit that i can't do it um so yeah i'm i'm definitely going to attempt it again and see how far i can get but i may have to forego the salt <laughs> or the coffee <laughs> Plus, who knows i didn't have coffee till day three so and i took it because i was starting to i think probably get a caffeine headache 
and uh, I just so I just kind of nipped it by doing that. Uh, and but I don't personally like black coffee either. I usually put heavy heavy yeah. cream in it, so so that too is a little difficult for me. But all right, well we got quite a few questions submitted, so we'll try to walk through, give our opinions and our experience and what we've tried for a few things and. Salt was one of them. Do you want to just skip right to that and sure. talk about it? Because because one of the things that I never thought of, and uh, until this question got asked, is uh, you know we talked previously about needing a little extra salt for ketosis, um, and then you'd mentioned earlier about the salt pill thing, and and to me like I I don't know if it was just a mental block or I never heard of it. So what what exactly uh, is, is a salt pill, and why would you do that? So um, I actually made my own. So I bought um, uh, capsules off of Amazon and then just filled them with salt myself. And you did rock salt or sea salt? or Yeah, I did the pink Himalayan. Pink Himalayan? Yep. Um, it, quite honestly, it was messy. It was very time-consuming to fill them, um, although it would have been worth it for me to continue, but I... So I'm sure I could Google this, but do they sell them? Uh, you know, I sell the salt pre yeah. Uh You know, I don't know. Oh, well, that goes for yeah. Now, I can tell you that um, I do take a, it doesn't have salt in it, but from the, uh, every once in a while, if I'm not, if like I feel like I sweat it a lot, I will take, uh, on it makes a mineral. It's, it is in it is in a capsule form. It doesn't have anything in there. Okay. And uh, I, I, do, I do take that. Yeah. But the original question was, I feel like I'm pouring salt over um, my food. So just to make sure it's clear on the question, uh, that it, the question is, are there ways I can get salt without pouring it all over my food? Yeah. Yeah. The person who submitted this um, is not a salt lover, much as myself, um, and felt like that's all they could taste is is salt on their food. So, um, again, the, the capsules can work. Um, but unfortunately for me, I found that it really was upsetting my stomach. Um, and I tried to experiment with it. Link with your whole fasting thing? Yeah, I I know. (laughs) Apparently I have a very weak stomach. I don't know. Never really realized it before, but, um, yeah. And again, I don't know if it's because of the quantity, maybe salt. I mean, maybe salt is the culprit for me. Maybe I should do an experiment with that. Um, just because that does seem to be a common thread here, but, uh, yeah, the, when I took the salt pills, um, I, I kind of had a burning sensation in my stomach, and I felt on the verge of nauseous all the time. So I stopped taking them, and I stopped having that feeling. Now, I can put it on my food, and I don't have it, but I think it's because, obviously, the quantity that you have in that pill is a little bit more than, well, a lot more than you would put on food. Um, I don't remember if I actually measured it, but I just recently read that those capsules hold almost a, a quarter teaspoon, um, or yeah, teaspoon of salt per ca- per capsule. It would still depend on how you filled it, right? Since it's uh, but I don't think you would put a quarter of a teaspoon on your food at a time. No, so, oh yeah, no, I I, I agree. It's definitely yeah. a lot more. So. So that sounds like a an experiment I need to write down and do another N1 experiment. Nice. <laughs> All right, so the next one is on moderate exercise. And we, we've kind of maybe mentioned this a little bit about, uh, but just to kind of make sure we both kind of call it out, the, this one is particularly about having a, quote, unquote, bunch of carbs uh, 30 minutes prior, right? It was prior to the workout? Uh, no, within 30 minutes after you finished. Within 30 minutes. Out. So yeah. I, I actually kind of, in my mind, I can talk to both, so I'm not too... Uh, but uh, what, from your experiences, what, what would you say to that question? Yeah, so, and again, we have talked about this a little bit in previous podcasts, but um, for me, um, no, I do not believe that you need a bunch of carbs prior to, um, and John and I are very in lockstep with that because he does his exercising fasting. Um, but so no, you do not need a bunch of carbs prior to your workout and eating a bunch of protein 30 minutes after. Um, again, no, um, in my opinion, and unless 
you, I mean, and this question specifically calls out that they do moderate exercise. So in this example, my answer to, this, to both would be no. Um, protein is not necessary to um, 30 minutes after your workout, unless you're hungry, right? So, I mean, in, in my opinion, you only eat to hunger. If your body is telling you that you're hungry, you need to eat. But because you did a workout, I don't think that you have to go eat a bunch of protein. Um, yeah, I would call that an advanced topic. And I, for moderate exercise, I agree. I don't think there's anything special you need to do. Um, I do think this question does have some merit when um, – I would guess I would call it uh, explosive training. So for most of us, uh, we're probably listening to this, I would say we don't qual qualify for that. But if you were a, a athlete and uh, you did uh, the kind of exercises that would be you know, going into your, your, your fast twitch muscle fiber, which is a fancy word of saying explosives, then you will see people who talk about doing a quote-unquote carb up. Again, moderate exercise, I don't think that says it, but if you see somebody talking about doing a carb up, it's usually after something that's been, uh, you know, explosive. And when they say carb up, you have to remember, compared to the standard American diet, uh, having extra carbs, they're talking about 25 grams of carbs uh, for a first person who's actively working out six times a week. So we're, we're, it's not, even then when they say carb up, it's not, it's by no means the stereotype in your head might be, I'm going to run, uh, run tomorrow, so I'm going to go get the big bowl of pasta, like that kind of stuff. It's just completely not needed, sad diet stuff. Um, I will tell you that it's harder for some people to get that to get fat adapted. So if you feel like you're hungry afterwards, you feel like you need carbs, and you do have just a little bit, it's not going to necessarily kill you. But I do, you you've got to kick that body over into to fat burning mode. So the the more you can kind of do without it, the better you are. So your mind will play some tricks on you with that, and it doesn't help that the advertisement almost always from a supplement company. They like to promote that 30 minutes. So yeah. I know you're smiling because you, you you see that a lot. Yeah, and that well, question. That's, that's just the standard thing you've heard. And oh man. Whenever you've done any kind of, if you're in, involved in any kind of a workout area, they talk about, well, you need to get that protein, you know, 30 minutes after, you know, whatever it happens. Yeah. So, Stoke your metabolism, I, I, like all that stuff. I don't know. I tried it for. I mean, I'll be I, honest, I do I, it. I do it only because I'm hungry. Right. Yeah, and if I'm, and, I, and I need to cut that out because I really don't need it. Yeah, you got to find out if it's, it's mental or not. Um, so yeah, so I, I think I mean if you want to toy with a carb up, then it's an advanced topic. If you're putting yourself in the moderate exercise category, don't even. I, I would recommend not, not even bothering. Yeah. An and the question actually came from um, a friend who is in one of your big chain. Um, uh, gyms, and that's what they... They probably really, push it. it absolutely. They sell it. Yeah, yeah they absolutely. The, whatever bar they call it. Yeah. yeah, the protein bars and the whatever. supplements, well, I mean, like the all the area, the, they call it something, a bar. Oh, yeah, a bar oh drinking. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The smoothie bar, or the whatever they call yeah. it. Yeah, a lot of, or a lot of gyms me, have it. Or make me a lot of money bar. Yeah. So she was concerned for me, to be honest, because we had had the conversation that I had started, you know, the, the heavy lifting and um, had mentioned that I don't, and I don't typically eat my first meal until somewhere between 1030 and 1130 every day. So that's where, that's really where that came from. She was concerned about my health. Because everyone is. Yeah, and uh, kind of a callback to a previous episode, but in the fasting, um, it's, it's about halfway through or so that Tom actually talks about the branch, branch chain amino acids, and, and I, was, I was kind of amazed. We didn't get into it in detail, but how he knew about, on average, how many, um, when he was, his branch chain amino acids were going down. So if you were fasting for a long period of time, then maybe that would, that would play a little bit bigger role, but... I, was like, I went five days, and I, I did not even take branched chain amino acids, which is what protein is based on, which is kind of the same, similar situation. So, 
All right, maybe a little bit too deep, but you know, some, I mean, people ask the clarifying questions, so I just want to make sure we address it. So the next question uh, presented is, aren't you concerned about the, health, the bad health effects of eggs, the fat and the cholesterol? So to be quite honest, um, I am not an egg lover. I, I'm not, I mean, I eat them every day, um, I, but I don't love eggs. I don't love the flavor of them, but it has nothing to do with health because in my opinion, the egg is probably the most healthy um, and the most healthy food out there, quite honestly. It has almost the best balance of everything that you need. Um, so, yeah, my, my answer is no. I don't have concerns about it. Um, and, again, I, between my husband and I, we go through about four dozen eggs a week. So That's a lot of eggs. That is a lot of eggs. So. It hasn't been countered, but <laughs> eggs are not really bad. Well, you know, it's one of those That's things that it they keep coming <laughs> back and forth. Yeah, they're I, like, I good, think, they're bad, they're good, they're bad. I think I've always heard the good, and it's always made more sense than the bad has come through. Well, the bad was cl cholesterol, and I think right. that, I mean, if you just... Well, the chicken's high in cholesterol. <laughs> well, yeah, I think the point is that, that cholesterol in general, I think they've pretty much debunked that. I mean, I think... Most most people will agree that they've debunked that. Right. Yep. And to be honest, um, I, I actually was listening to one of uh, Jimmy Moore's. I don't know. If you remember if it was the Facebook Live episode or um, one of one of his episodes. And he he raises chickens, and he had accidentally dropped an egg on the ground, and the chickens flocked to it, and all of them were fighting over the yolks, which I mean. The human is about the only one who we have the social um, involvement of changing uh, how we react to our body's signals. But animals are smart. I mean, not that humans aren't, but they don't have those. Or less um, smart. Yeah. They don't get, their mind doesn't get in the way. Right. Yeah, exactly. There you go. But you know what I mean? So yeah, instinctively, man. the chickens knew that that was the healthy piece of that egg. Um, and so I found that to be very, very interesting. I just find it kind of demented because I'm eating <laughs> their own <laughs> young. <laughs> yes, cannibalism. So I think I've talked before about eggs, and then um, I tend to get fresh eggs from a neighbor. So I'm also like you're mentioning, Jimmy. Um, I think I don't know how much we've gone into that, but uh, you actually put some stats on there. So tell me how much better are fresh eggs on average. <laughs> Since you looked this up. Yeah, so... I don't want to take your credit. Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, so there is a third less cholesterol in a farm fresh egg versus um, eggs that are produced commercially. Uh, there also is a fourth less saturated fat, two-thirds more vitamin A, there is two times more omega-3 fatty acids, and there's three times more vitamin E, um, and seven times more beta carotene. That one actually was a little surprising to me. I wasn't expecting the beta carotene, but all that said, um, I get them because I can get them really easy. But per, you know, just personal preference. I mean, if 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 that's a stumbling block, I mean, they can be pretty expensive depending on what your budget is. Uh, when eggs go on sale for fifty cents a dozen, compared to farm fresh eggs. I mean, if, that, if that's a budget breaker for you, you know, I wouldn't go out of my way, but I, I do prefer them. That's personal preference. But a lot of food follows that pattern. Fresh vegetables. I mean, if you oh, get yeah. out of your garden, you're going to see a lot of difference between what you buy at the store, right? So... But not everybody has access to fresh. Yeah. So I was not convinced that a store-bought egg was worse than a farm fresh egg. And so John challenged me very early on in this. Um, he actually brought some eggs to work, and I took them home. I have to tell you, the first thing for me was visual. When I cracked that egg open and saw the deep, rich, um, yellow yolk, it it was it actually blew my mind. I never really realized that there was a, a difference. 
Um, so my husband and I switched. He was very reluctant, and to be honest, he still is. He thinks I'm crazy that I spend money right. on um, the eggs. <laughs> um, but I had found um, somebody local that I had started buying eggs from, and then I started doing some research on what you feed them and if they should be free range and all of this. Um, I switched as of yesterday, um, and I am purchasing them from a different farmer. I took a picture of it, and I'm going to put that picture in the show notes. Um, so just just keep in mind that there is a huge difference between store-bought eggs and farm fresh eggs, but there's also a difference in your farm fresh eggs. Yeah. So um, you need to be cognizant of how the animals are able to go out and forage for themselves, if they are pinned up in a coop, if they're um, if they have access to the different varieties of food and what sort of um, supplemental meal that they're feeding them. Yeah, if they're just giving them, you know, some cheap GMO and all. Yeah. 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 So my neighbor, you can just, they just open the chicken coop up in the, I mean, they're just like walking all over their yard. And I mean, they, like, yeah. they lose them every once in a while. It's pretty crazy. My brother is the same way. My brother has chickens and they, they're pretty much free roam around. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty crazy how they, and then they put themselves to bed when it starts getting dark. They all go into their little hand. Wow. Yeah. He's lost a few to coyotes though. Yeah. Well, and, and I've talked to some farmers um, and that, you know, that was one of the things that they, if they have a challenge, especially if they have a large flock, um, is to try to be able to keep them from uh, getting Other know, taken by, yeah, the hawks and the coyotes and, and whatnot. But um, the, the picture that I'm going to put in the show notes, the, they both are farm fresh eggs, <clears throat> so just kind of keep that in mind because... Um, you should do like a store bot and then see and see the difference in all three of them. Yeah, I probably should. Yeah, I mean, that that, that would imply that the color is the most important thing, though. Yeah, I guess. Well, but, it but is an indicator, get, but. Yeah, I mean, but that's the first thing that you see, right? Well, and I shouldn't say that because it isn't the first thing. The first thing I noticed was cracking the egg. First of all, the shell is thinner. The membrane is not as strong. Um which I had made mention to my husband probably two years ago that I felt like these eggs were weird when I was buying them from the store. It was, they were hard to crack. When you, it, would also, it was almost like they had two membranes inside of there instead of the one. Um, they were hard to peel when you would hard boil them. And although the farm fresh eggs were better, the ones that I started using yesterday, it, it was night and day difference in the difference in the farm fresh eggs even. So... I mean, visual is kind of the first thing. And although, I mean, because we can't see the omega yeah. fatty acids and we can't see look all of that. Yeah. <laughs> you have that microscope. So. And do you, do, the, do the, you know, they have like different varieties of chickens? Uh, they do. Um, the kind of thing I kind of like too is they got some of the Easter egg kind and some of the you know dark brown ones. And so I, I don't know why, but in my mind, the variety of different shells makes a difference to me too. So I guess I'm all about the color. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he, they have chickens that actually hatch Easter eggs? <laughs> okay. Great question. Great clarifying question. So they're not what you think. They have like a light green tint or a light blue tint. It's very faint, but next to a brown one. They, they do, or next to a white egg, you can tell the difference. Never seen but, but yeah, they're not like decorated or anything. Yeah, we actually have. I'll take a picture of the green egg, um, and and I'll put that in the show notes too, Kevin, because this um, I bought four dozen yesterday, and uh, although most of them are brown, um, they I do have a couple of green ones and some colors yeah. that I hadn't seen from the other farmer either. So and a little harder to measure too because they're not all the same size because right. they go through and rank them to extra large, large, and medium. Right. So you kind of get a little more uh, variety and variety too. So wow, we talked surprisingly long time about it. <laughs> but I'm glad you asked because you're thinking they're colored and stenciled like my kids do. <laughs> Little, little star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so moving on. What is your favorite keto dish? I skipped one. Okay. But let's go ahead and stick with it. What's your favorite keto dish? Uh, I have to be honest. I, 
I, I really love food, so <laughs> that one was really hard for me. Um, I do tend to gravitate a lot to Mexican flavor profile. Um, so I would have to say it was probably um, tacos. Um, I do love Alfredo as well, so I do a lot of shrimp Alfredo. Um, but I am a beef lover, so I'd have to say. Wow, you are all over the place. I know, I know. I would call that you didn't answer the question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, well, if you follow our Facebook um, or Instagram, I generally post out there all of the meals that I make um, for the week. And the majority of the time, I do have some sort of a Mexican uh, dish for the week, and I have a lot of beef. I, I'm, I'm a beef girl. So for, for Mexican, a lot of people go right straight to tacos and stuff. So do you do, like, taco salad without a shell? I do. Um, yeah, I make, I make a lot of taco meat, um, and then I'll – mix it together with, you know, different stuff throughout the week. Sometimes just regular tacos. It's like a base, and then you use right. it for a couple other dishes. Yep. Do you put coconut oil in your... I do not. I do not. You should try that. I actually... Well, I mean, I have really fatty meat, so um, I have mentioned before I got the uh, half a cow, so I actually asked them to add me, uh, fat to my burger, so mine is generally somewhere around 75%, so it's pretty fatty on its own. So I'm not fat phobic, but now that we don't have our meat anymore and we're actually buying it at the store, I tend to buy leaner meat at the store that's mass produced. And it's not that, and then I add coconut oil, so it's obviously not about the fat, but it's just something about the farm, farming thing and, I, and you know, and the, the the, you know, how the fat can hold more toxins. I just, for some reason, it's worth it me mentally for the extra money to buy a little bit leaner and then add fat to it. Which is and honestly, I would not disagree. Weight. Yeah, I would not disagree with that theory. I really need another. You really need to find somebody else to go and out with me. So, um, you guys are in the local area. I'm about uh, ready. So. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? Didn't you bring that up? That was a top conversation for my wife and I too. So woohoo! You know, Look, this is right here yeah. in the room. We're gonna have a farm. I've never owned never had a cow share, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, let me know. Great. You're gonna start raising your own cow. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't anything? Ask my wife. I am anti anti uh, anything that takes consumes more time. I can't can't handle <laughs> can't handle what I got now. Listen to some of my minimalism talks. Uh, so me, my favorite dish. It always goes back to a salad. Isn't that really bad? Really? Yeah, really. So here, so picture this, though. It's not like you're thinking salad, right. like, I don't know, it's just like rabbit food. Yeah, but seriously, mine, mine are not very rabbity, but um, it allows me to do a lot of mixed greens. Um, I'll do kale, all kinds of different stuff. Sometimes I buy a shred or whatever, and I just love Caesar salad dressing. And I mentioned that we make it make it our own, and then this was the callback because he challenged me to the hand blender thing. So I have not done the hand blender to make salad dressing yet. I will, I promise. But uh, I did attempt to use the hand blender, and it did work well. Good. I, maybe a whole other story after we get back to off the keto dishes. But the cool thing about the, the big salad is, is I can throw any vegetables that I have around the house. Green, you know, pep, you know, sweet peppers, whatever. And it, I don't know, I just, it's just so much food. Every time I eat it, I'm just like so stuffed. And, you know, you know, hard, you know, hard cheese and this type of stuff. It's just a huge salad. And I just, mm. well, there's a new restaurant locally that just opened. In fact, one of my yeah. coworkers told me about it um, oh, this is the, a couple of days ago. That is, all they do is salads. Yeah. I heard that too. I'll have to get you the name. You'd be like in heaven. Noodle company because everything's noodle. <laughs> it's yeah. a salad and company. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, like you that. get something and then I think you order like the base and then anything you can just, just go open. out on the bar. Yeah, it's I just think. open. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think where that's at. I didn't buy it. Oh, I was in. I, I was have to ask you. like that in Chicago, where, yeah. they, where they gave you a base and then you you just pick whatever you want and it's kind of like Subway but for salads. Yeah, I'll have to ask him because that's, that's, like, uh, that's who told me. That rice place out there at the <clears throat> Grand Prairie. <laughs> There's lots of ricey kind of but restaurants. You go in, you choose your base, and then they have everything. A flat oh, top. the flat top. Flat top. Flat top. Flat top. Yeah. Yeah, those are everywhere also. It's a chain. 
So yeah, this may be a chain too. I don't know. I'd never heard of it, but well, yeah, there are um, solid chains like that. So and there's also yeah. Um, so I guess did I answer that? Yeah. Yeah, valid. Say, and that I do. I felt bad saying. I had to. I guilty. This, this kind of sounds weird. this, but that's kind of weird for a guy to right? say. Right? <laughs> like I do want to admit. It. Is your recipe for Caesar salad dressing on on your uh, website? No, not. See, all these recipes have come from me. Somebody has slacked a little in the recipe. And by little, she means a lot. So, <laughs> so you know what? I'll talk about that for just a split second because there's not, it's not too much to it. And the reason why I haven't fit fully uh, switched to using the hand blender is because it's Caesar salad dressing. Uh, I do it the, the poor, the, not the poor man's way, the lazy man's way because I am too lazy to make my own mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah, she's laughing. See, this is a callback from previous shows where she's told me I'm an idiot. But, yeah. but I will get there. But um, the interesting thing about the Caesar salad dressing is, is like the uh, anchovy paste is one of the kind of big ingredients in it. And then just like regular cloves of garlic. So you take like an entire clove of garlic and just and cut the top and the bottom off and then just kind of, you know, take all the pa- papery head. stuff. Tire head of yeah, garlic. Like, yeah, yeah, tire head. What did I say? Clove. Okay, a clove is small. An entire head. So it's it's really pretty garlicky. Well, I was going to say, that's a lot of garlic. It How is. How much dressing does this make? Uh, more than a, more than half a pint. <laughs> wow, that would be <laughs> And then nobody will talk to me for days. I don't know. <laughs> you have this weird smell permeating from you. That's right. It comes out of my pores when I work out. Uh, so... <laughs> But um, I, I really geared up the anchovy paste. I used to not, I used to not put in much, and now I like I'm pretty much the only one that eats it. So I've slowly added in more and more and more. If you're the only one that eats it, that might be might what? be telling you something. Okay, fine. So it sounds like maybe there needs to be some type of uh, what's it called when you all come together and do uh, intervention. intervention. <laughs> there needs to be a garlic and uh, and salad. Caesar intervention for John. Okay, so wow, that was a <laughs> rabbit hole that we just fell down. <clears throat> Maybe it'll be our first video we post, me yeah. attempting to make the dressing. I have already posted, posted lots of making, things. but I made I, I made mayo and I did a video of it. Oh, I really am bad at social media. Yeah, I, I did it because although John does say that he doesn't have time to make mayonnaise, there are others who have told me that too. And here's my response to that. Hogwash. Oh, you know what? You even called me out. You're right. You totally called me out on that. It takes it takes a maximum of two minutes. And truly, Pressure. the most time you spend is putting the ingredients in your jar. So. I know. I was really fascinated because we, I have to pour the oil real slow into the... Oh, yeah. Because no, I just dump it all in, put everything in there, let it settle. And one, one day, I, I'll, I'll come in here and be like, I've been revolutionized. <laughs> or attempted to make some fat bombs last night with blueberry, blueberries, cream cheese, coconut oil. Okay. And uh, it didn't say use a blender or anything like that. It just said whisk it together. But I could not make a homogeneous mixture of cream cheese and coconut oil. Ooh. As soon as Ooh. I got out of it, it would all the oil comes out. Yeah, that would be tough. I probably, with that, would have used a hand blender, to be honest. So it'll stay that way. It will. It will mix together. It should. Yes. I think the only fat bombs I've ever made, I've put in the freezer. Well, that's what this. That's what this is. But you got to mix those two together and put the blueberries. Oh right, because you can't. And put then them you in put them thing. in. Put them in muffin cups and throw it in the freezer. So gotcha. I looked at it this morning, and uh, yeah, you know, they're all. The cream cheese is there, but then on the outside is the coconut oil, <laughs> all <laughs> horrified <laughs> around it. Okay. Well, hey, we appreciate you sharing. Your but, so that's, that was I was going to ask. I go and, and I got a hand blender. I could have used it, but I'm going by what the recipe said. Yeah. It didn't say anything about using a machine. To yeah. Do that. It, for and me, so I, I immediately wanted to go back to them and say, "Hey, have you made this?" <laughs> you would reply. <laughs> <laughs> have you actually what made the arm strength you have that was able to whisk that? Did you do this? <laughs> so I had a I had a pretty solid fail the other day, like. Um, I we we're talking about cream cheese coffee cake or cream what's that called? Oh, a cheesecake. Cheesecake. Mm-hmm. So crustless cheesecake are very common, right? So I got the recipe out and it called for a significant amount of artificial sugar, which I wasn't willing to put in there. It 
definitely needed it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> My kids wouldn't even eat it. They're like, oh, no. <laughs> but hey, that's where I used the hand mixer because I made like homemade whipped cream. And oh, man, that is really good. It, it was, but man, there's a lot of sugar in whipped cream too. I yeah. have no idea. I just put a couple of stevia, I have a stevia liquid drops in there, and oh, yeah. that made it a little bit sweeter. But, but yeah, I was I was shocked at how much uh, fake sugar was in that. I just, yeah, I made one last night because I'm getting back into the cookbook scheme, so I'm trying to get these. Get a, and these are like get a co-host that helps. Yeah. <laughs> well, these are like recipes. My my goal is to take recipes that you would have eaten pre-keto and keto them. So this one is a Kentucky ooey gooey pie. I have never eaten one, but a, a few of my friends said that Grandma used to make it. So I made one. It's in the refrigerator. We're going to... Oh, so you haven't had sex? I haven't tasted it yet. Really? How do you make something that tray? Uh, because I made it last night, and you you have to... Oh, it's cool. set. like two hours. Yeah, so I still tried it. <laughs> I was going to bed. I, I was not worried about oh. eating a pie, but all right, we've only got time for a few more. But I thought this one was good because uh, it said, I, "I've been keto since the beginning of May, but I have only lost 14 pounds. What am I doing wrong?" Yeah. So my first thing that you're doing wrong is using the term only. Or scale. Wow. 14 pounds is a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of weight. In three, in three months? Yeah. That's a lot. Um, and, and honestly, when this question was put in, it was it only been eight weeks. So eight weeks of time, 14 <clears throat> pounds is a lot of weight. So first of all, stop thinking the negative side of things. Always look at the positive of it. That is a huge accomplishment. Huge accomplishment. Yeah, and I and I so I'm going to be a little almost negative about this question and say that that is almost too much weight to lose that fast without damaging. Um, it, and, and you know this is coming from the athletic kid, right? So Joe, you know. Yeah. It, so it depends on how heavy that person is too. Right? That, well, and I was going to say so in the beginning, I would I would not be concerned about this rapid of a weight loss at that short of amount of time. And the reason being is because of the inflammation that this reduces. So probably the majority of that 14 pounds was water weight. And so I'm fine with that. Um, Good point. Yeah, I mean, now if they had said that they were in, if they had been into it for six months or a year, that kind of weight loss I probably would be questioning. Um, But in the beginning of this, way of eating that's not that abnormal but again celebrate your accomplishments like that is my biggest takeaway of this one do not look at the negative i have said before stop looking at the scale first of all because the scale does not measure your success stop looking at your progress versus someone else's and rejoice in it one pound loss in eight weeks is is, a, is an accomplishment period um, and 14 is huge. I mean, I'm saying hands in the air to that one. That's that's huge. So. And for those of you guys listening to this, she did put her hand I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you've lost more weight. How long have you been keto? I have been keto for just over a year. It was a year in May. Um, so I... I think that I have lost a total of like 23 pounds um, keto, which doesn't sound like a lot, um, but I have lost more more sizes than weight. So again, that's where I go back to scale does not determine your success. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think one of the questions was, would you ever go back to your old way of eating? Not in a million years. One million. What no. if somebody get offered you a million dollars? No. I have to um, be honest. Bucks. <laughs> well, if it was a short term, <laughs> short term thing, maybe a million dollars. But um, for how I felt back then, and I mean, again, I've talked very openly about this. I have struggled my entire life and gone to doctors. I could not even tell you how many times because I knew there was something wrong. I knew something was going on. I didn't feel right. Um, and no one could help me. I mean, there was, you know, sorry, here, go to this doctor and try this. No, wait, go to this one. 
um, and no one put the pieces together for me. This is the first time in my entire life that I feel like I should feel, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what normal feels like, but I think this is it. I, I don't have all of those aches and pains and weird things that people are like, why would you have that? Why would you feel that way? I don't know. I don't, I mean, headaches on a daily basis, and I mean, it just, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that I would ever, ever go back. So for me, <clears throat> it's kind of weird, because I honestly don't know, because I backed into the, to, into this way of eating kind of weirdly. So I got Primal Blueprint certified in 2014. So I have been somewhat cyclical, though. I I spent many years still not probably going completely low carb. I, I really I cut out all the processed carbs. I did a lot of aggressive stuff, but I wouldn't say I ever concentrated on being in ketosis because it was never a goal of mine. And it wasn't until much much later. Uh, where I was realizing that I had just gone low carb and didn't even realize it, and it was like a, and it was literally was an article on Primal, Primal, Primal Blueprint that said, "Are you know like are are you in ketosis and don't know it?" And I read that and I'm like, "Holy crap, that, that might be me!" <laughs> and then I actually tracked on my fitness pal for a while and I'm like, "Oh man, I, I you know I do eat a lot of carbs, but you know a lot of fiber, a lot of other stuff because I just try to do vegetables." So I really don't know, but to your point of wherever I go back, to that point of the question is, I also did a, I wouldn't call it experiment, but for a while I did like the cheat day, and that made me realize that I don't want to change the way I eat, because that day, it would be, I mean, obviously all the, all of the chemicals are flowing when you're eating. Your Texas Roadhouse, and you've seen how many pa- uh, packages of rolls you can tear down with all that, that <laughs> butter. <clears throat> but I slowly realized that I felt like I was hungover the next day, and I'm like, it's not worth it. I do not want to feel like this. So your point about being normal, I don't know how that worked out for me, but I just realized that cheat days, I am not in for cheat days. Yeah. But with that said, you know, if I went to Italy and I wouldn't stop me from, you know, getting a full Italian experience and I'm using air quotes and talking really weird, but <laughs> I mentioned that, you know, I've, I've done the, well, I even like what, a couple months ago I said that I was up in Chicago and I decided to do a deep dish pizza and then wished I hadn't. <clears throat> and I was just kind of learn along the way, man, what was in my head of how amazing that was is obviously not. And I, yeah, yeah, I went to the wrong pizza place. Whoever but, told me that. But didn't you? But didn't you think about that beforehand? And you think that well, I'm probably going to suffer for this. Oh, I knew. Yeah. I, kn- I knew that I wouldn't feel great, but I always forget how crappy I feel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I understand that. And I think for me, you under, I don't underestimate maybe. Yeah. yeah. And I think for me, like I felt so bad, and I feel so different. Um, I, I don't even know that I can actually express that, but it's such a drastic difference for me that food just isn't worth it. First of all, I've never had the food addiction, right? I don't care that much for sweets. I'm, well, except beef. I do love beef. Um, but I mean, like food has never been that important to me. So I just don't think that I would ever be willing to go back to feeling that bad just for the sake of eating a food. Right. I, I, I get I get it. So I guess I can't answer the question, which is what it comes down to, but I do feel like I'll never go back to that way. I will never have Kraft macaroni and cheese as a staple in my household, even though like my kids for some reason think it's like the best thing for sliced bread. And I don't have I, I don't have sliced bread either. <laughs> so to the changes. Um, I know we only have got we're already over time because we always tend to run over time, but uh, we are going to pivot a little bit. Yep. We're still going to do these lunch and learns, but we are going to do them the first and third weeks of the month. Um, we have kind of got to so where we, no, I wouldn't say soul searching, but we looked at surveys. Um, some of you guys may have gotten a survey, some of you may not, but we've we've done some in like internal polls, 
And people generally like what we're doing, but sometimes we're winging it a little too much. And we don't want to suffer quality. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit more time being a little bit more educational and try to, to put a little bit more time into our presentations and then, and then uh, kind of do a little bit more on the website, a little bit more marketing and maybe make it a little easier right now. It, to, be, to be fair, it is definitely hard to find something. When I say, hey, I did a, you know, something on meditation, you should check it out. It's very difficult to find it. So, so just a small pivot. Um, we're not going away. You can still post questions. We'll still do question and answer sections, but they may be smaller and incorporated into a session so that it's a little more bite-sized. So anything you want to add on that? I'm, I know I'm trying to wrap it up. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, through, but. John and I have talked a lot about this. Um, we really want to give the best that we can. Um, so we just feel like if we pull back a little bit, and it may not be forever, right? I mean, we might get to a point. Unfortunately, both of us at the same time right now have a heavy workload, so that's kind of impacting Everybody two things. Silly work. Yeah, darn yeah, it. All right, silly work. Um, so just, you know, again, we just want to kind of pull back a little bit, regroup. Um, it's hard for volunteer stuff. So yeah. um, you might have noticed our goal always was to release the podcast the day after. I mean, we've struggled with that. We've, we've got all this, uh, I don't want to say admin work because that makes it sound like it's not important, but taking and tying everything together is we think is much more important than producing more shows at a, at a, you know, like the way we're doing it. So we're going to look yeah. a little bit more quality. So, but yeah, feel free to still post questions. Um, if topics, same, same thing. Uh, give us a, you want to roll through all our social media really super fast? Absolutely. Ketonian Corner, um, you can reach us at ketoniancorner.com. You can also reach us um, at, through our email. You know, we really probably should just say it's Ketonian Corner everywhere. It is. It is. Everywhere I tried, you want I tried to, be. to streamline everything. I mean, the, that is one of the efficiencies that we did do. The, trying to get that everywhere. The advantage of spelling corner with a K. Yeah. <laughs> that you're the only one. Yeah. So Tony Corner at Gmail. So shoot us some feedback, um, some what you're interested in, and we'll try to incorporate. And we've that. never asked for a review on iTunes, and it shows because we have no reviews on iTunes. Yeah. Yeah, give listening. us some reviews. Yeah, you guys are listening to this on yeah. iTunes. And, and honestly, I should probably review us. <laughs> the hosts are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing, but I'm totally going to do it. <laughs> so now you have to go out just to look and see what review I give myself. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be five stars. I'm sure because of the great. <laughs> Broke arm, patting myself on the back to do five stars. <laughs> It'll say something like that. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank and you. Tune in in two weeks. Two weeks. Yep. <laughs> what do I, how do I stop? How do I stop? <clears throat> Sorry, you guys, on the phone. First and third. Thank <laughs> you.